There is no doubt that one of the biggest mysteries that has intrigued our imagination is the question of lighting in the ancient past. Of course, candles can be burned to light up tunnels and cavities, but deep in the hardest to reach parts of the ancient monuments, it is a real enigma as to how this was done. Fire, of course, would quickly burn away the air that we need for breathing. This has led to a widespread debate as to how it could have been possible, leading to speculation that the tombs and temples were only worked in during sunlight hours and using mirrors to reflect the sunlight all over the ancient passageways. But wasn't there a much simpler solution? One in which the dynastic Egyptians are clearly showing us, perhaps. Wait till you hear this. Our belief is as follows. The dynastic Egyptians found the ancient monuments in the state we see them in today. They then set about carving their hieroglyphics onto these very ancient things in an effort to document history in stone. But they were just as confuddled as to what these things actually are as we are. If you consider that they found certain technologies that they didn't know how to operate and they simply repurposed these technologies as they broke and fell into despair, then you must seriously consider the gap in history is in fact between the cataclysm of around 12,500 years ago and the re-emergence of civilization in this region about 5,000 years ago. This means that the structures in Egypt were built before the cataclysm, and some have even speculated that the Great Pyramid is the top of an ancient survival bunker with the pyramid shape to guide a fire blast or even a flood, and there is evidence of both, but that is for another video. The point we are trying to make is in that of how the dynastic Egyptians lit the inside of these great structures that have hieroglyphics all over the walls. Note. We are referring dynastic Egypt and not ancient Egypt. The ancient Egyptians would be the pyramid builders and we know absolutely nothing about them with the exception that they were marvelous builders and developers of technologies. Now, if they found something that had a switch of sorts that could be turned on and off, then they would understand how to operate this, right? Perhaps there was a power source like a battery, the Baghdad battery, perhaps. And when the battery no longer worked, they could not generate any more power, so the lighting machine was no longer of any use. We, of course, are referring to the Dendera light bulb. Some say this is a snake in a glass jar, but think again, this is a clear representation of ancient technology and it strikes the eeriest echoes from the past when you consider that this thing existed and survived a period of extinction only to be documented thousands of years later by the emergence of dynastic Egypt. Faience is a glassy substance manufactured expertly by the dynastic Egyptians. The process was first developed in Mesopotamia, first at Ur and later at Babylon, with significant results, but Faience production reached its height of quality and quantity in Egypt. Faience was made by grinding quartz or sand crystals together with various amounts of sodium potassium, calcium, magnesium, and copper oxide. The resulting substance was formed into whatever shape was desired, whether an amulet, beads, a brooch, or a figurine, and then said pieces were heated. During the heating, the pieces would harden and develop a bright color, which was then finally glazed. It is thought that the Egyptian artisans perfected faience in an attempt to imitate turquoise or other hard-to-find gemstones. Dynastic Egyptian culture flourished between 5,500 BC with the rise of technology as evidence in the glasswork of Faience and 30 BC with the death of Cleopatra VIII, the last Ptolemaic ruler of Egypt. It is famous today for the great monuments which celebrated the triumphs of the rulers and honored the gods of the land. Referencing the gods could be seen as this civilization referencing a much, much older civilization and the dynastic Egyptians do tell us that they superseded a much more ancient kingdom. The culture is often misunderstood as having been obsessed with death. Had this been so, it is unlikely it would have made the significant impression it did on other ancient cultures such as Greece and Rome. And in fact, the obsession was not with dying but rather the process of leaving the earth in a state of suspended animation. Hence, no mummies are found from the old kingdom of Egypt, yet millions are found from the new kingdom, almost like the new kingdom witnessed some sort of rapture and so tried to replicate what they saw. 
the Egyptians were obsessed by life and its continuation rather than by a morbid fascination with death. The tombs, mortuary temples, and mummies that they produced were a celebration of life and a means of continuing it for eternity. For the Egyptians, as for other cultures, death was part of the journey of life, with death marking a transition or transformation after which life continued in another form, the spiritual rather than the corporal. If you consider that they are clearly telling us something like this, then you must also consider that our understanding is greatly flawed towards the ancient past. In fact, it's almost like we are just not getting it at all. Well, some of us are trying to better understand at least. You also have to wonder if these ancient technologies are known to be ancient technologies by the so-called elite of society today. Look at the Edison-Tesla struggle. We see that now as good versus bad to a certain degree, but also consider that if these men knew of light technology from the ancient past, then how did they acquire their knowledge? Of course, Mr. Edison is widely regarded as a key figure in the development of the light bulb, and Tesla now famed for lighting up the entire modern world. But if these things had already previously existed, then how did they know to recreate the past inventions? Were they aware of the Dendera light? If they weren't, then this is one hell of a coincidence, is it not? Consider the Akashic Records. The Akashic Records are a compendium of all human events, thoughts, words, emotion, and intent ever to have occurred in the past, present, or future. They are believed by Theosophists to be encoded in a non-physical plane of existence known as the Etheric Plane. Nikola Tesla mentions this plane when he states the following, My brain is only a receiver. Within the universe there is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration. I have not fully penetrated into the secrets of this core, but I know that it exists. Could it really be the case that everything that has ever been will always be? If there is a connection with the Dendera light and the modern world, then we must consider that the ancient world, say 15,000 years ago, was just like our cities of today. If this is the case and the reset happened 12,500 years ago when the earth was cleansed to start over, then we must heed the warnings of the ancients. We have told you guys before about the astronomical clock at Giza. This is the countdown to the next cycle. These are 26,000 year cycles that starts and stops with the Great Sphinx aligning with the star Regulus. The architecture of Sphinx points towards the critical astronomical cycle of our planet. Facts say that each star in the universe moves one degree in every 72 years and it takes 26,000 years to complete an orbit of the planet. The constellations of Zodiac locate the Earth in the universe, so if we link the constellation and Giza, we will find a great message hidden in this connection. Four angles of the pyramid represent the four signs of the zodiac, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. In the ancient world, Scorpio was represented by an eagle and Aquarius by an angel. These signs are carved on the front walls of this architecture. These four signs are used to be called as the guardians of the heaven. These stars are a constant distance with respect to each other and hence can be used as the measure of finding directions. Sphinx is a symbol of angel Leo axis of the pyramid, a human head on lion's body. Giza is a great astronomical clock of our planet, whose dials are the four constellations, and the head of the clock is represented as a sphinx gaze that turns around in every 26,000 years. But how do we know when the cycle begins? The answer is the bump on the sphinx chest which is also known as the Lion's Heart by Arabs. The Lion's Heart is also the Arabic, the name of the brightest star in Leo constellation, Regulus. When the Sphinx line up with the star Regulus, the new cycle of Equinox begins. This huge clock makes a full circle in every 26,000 years. Now, what is the significance of this 26,000 years? Many archaeologists believe that it indicates towards the cycle of destruction and rebirth by water or fire, and this is why we can't explain the Giza Plateau, because anything that was not built to last was destroyed. Giza is telling us to prepare, but it is also telling us that the only way of doing this 
is also to unite and perhaps this is why we are making advancements into space exploration. Perhaps it has literally been done before. Who knows? Just a theory, remember. There is very little doubt that what the Dendera light bulb represents was in fact ancient technology. We are clearly seeing wires and volt symbols that represent electricity. We clearly see a power source as if it is plugged in and we also see huge people holding these things. Look at how big these were actually. Why are there bigger people holding it with the smaller people supporting it? It is a crazy relief guys and we of course would love to hear your take on what this represents. Dendera is very unspectacular compared to other wonders in the region but there is a reason for that. The reason being that this is a dynastic Egyptian construction dedicated to the goddess Hathor with dynastic reliefs. But of course with the added twist of ancient advanced technology carved into the walls, this very unspectacular place then becomes a footnote in our understanding of the past. We may not have the answers guys but at least we do have the questions and we intend to ask those questions until we start to understand these things more clearly than we do presently. Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.